Hello, gentlemen. I'm feeling alive. I hope you're feeling alive, just like POD says. And we are here with the week three F BBBT for the BFFFL. And this time we're going on location. We're in the truck. Got a kid in jujitsu practice right now. Didn't feel like talking to those dads and parents inside. Figured I'd do something more important with my time than chit chat about the weather and other bulls squeege. So, uh, what's more pertinent? than talking about the BFFL. Nothing. Definitely not state testing. I'm taking notes on the back of my state testing page. That's how little I care about anything that's not fantasy baseball related. So going back to week two for a moment, had some good winners on Thrills. Thrills went 3-1-1 one, one last week. Had Alpha winning. Had Ghost winning. Had Just Here winning. Didn't have Cletus winning. He pulled out the dub easy. And definitely didn't have Jaycock and Thrills going to a tie right there. Kind of upsetting. Some people, a.k.a. Billy Baseball, in his exemplary, exemplary written week two recap piece, taking over the Cup of Joe from Bedell. I'm loving what I'm seeing, Billy Boy. Can't emphasize that enough. Loving it! Said Thrills might come out a little less cocky. <laughs> Billy. Billy. <laughs> oh, Billy. How? I thought you knew me better than that. Like there's a chance in hell of that happening, my friend. Doubling down on the dickishness. Going from one to two right there. Actually, I'm doubling down. I'm going from two to four, just like most of you guys out there. All right, so speaking about Billy, speaking about thrills, those two mugs are facing off against each other. So let's just go ahead and get that matchup out of the way first. Billy, talking about your team. Looking back last week, I see Shane McClanahan, 13 innings pitched. And I had to ask myself, did this motherfucker get to start three different times this week? Was it a 12 12 day week again? Because there's no way in God's green earth in two games Shane McClanahan made it through six and seven innings respectively. That just blows my mind that Kevin Cash would allow that down there in Tampa. That's not a Tampa Bay Ray fundamental right there. I don't believe it for one second. I'm saying somebody fudged the numbers. And I also got to say, you won hands down. But after that Kyle Schwar baby blow up on Angel Hernandez, that everybody in America just stood up and slow clap too. You you should have gotten the auto victory right there just from that. That was worth one bazillion fantasy points, that blow up. So good job to you right there picking up a dub this week. Maybe against Thrills, definitely last week. Speaking about Thrills right here, sucked it out, just sucked down, got to a tie after courageously coming back and winning week one, nearly faltering and just falling apart at the finish line to almost lose week two, but luckily pulled out a tie right there for thrills. And when you look at the team, it's easy to see why. The man has never had that good of a pitching week in his life. Probably will never have another week that pitching stoutness again in his life. Sub one and a half ERA, that just is unheard of from a thrills-like team. A batting average that was almost equivalent at like 185 right there. That's something you don't expect out of a thrills team. I expect that to improve going forward. I got a team full of hitters right there. Brian Reynolds, one, one, just one person in particular, pick out. he's not going to play like this all year long. He's going to get it in gear. And for that reason and that reason alone, I'm picking Thrills to pick up a dub this week. So, sorry, Billy Baseball. Thrills picks up a dub. Going on to our next matchup, we got Joe Marshall versus Rob Manfred's club, his fan club. And Rob, this you're, this club, oh shit, it's just as bad as commission himself. 0-2, we're seeing some hard times right here for your team right here. Byron Buxton might be the shining light. As you maybe you can see a shining light through my window right here from this glorious day. My my people up north, it is 82 degrees and not a cloud in the sky. Nary a cloud in the sky here in Douglasville, Georgia. I hope you guys aren't you know shoveling snow or anything like that up there in the north. Had extra recess. It was fantastic. But Rob, Byron Buxton might be the shining light that you need. It's not going to be Adam Frazier. It's not going to be those other guys that you have right there. Excuse me for the hiccups, gentlemen. Let me swig down a little of Atlanta's finest Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah. Nope, that didn't matter. Well, I can't stop talking and hold my breath. That would be boring television. But without, if, if he doesn't do anything, you're not having a chance in the world of winning total bases and home runs each week, Rob, because you've got no pop on the team. I can't, I look at that team and I don't see how you're hitting double digit home runs each week. I just, it's going to be hard for me to fathom something like that happening. You you might want to try making a deal. We did see one trade made last week. I'll get to that in a moment. 
you might want to look about doing the same thing. You have some good assets there. You might want to look to pedal them. You know I love Byron Buxton. Throw them my way. I got some pictures. I got like three. Joe Marshall, very quiet one and one. You know, normally Ryan's team either gets out really hot or really not. And this year he's just kind of, you know, one and one, lose one, win one. Um, he did say, I'm going to fact check on this one. We might have to pull it up, but... Uh, Somebody said they weren't going to lose to a team with three catchers, and then somebody did, in fact, lose to a team with three catchers. So, Ramon, I mean, you should take a long, hard look in the mirror at yourself on that one, going back on your word. And the reason you lost, you didn't hit, and you didn't pitch. Your pitching went to a 4.77, 1.5, 8.75 Ks per nine. That's that's not winning. That is not winning any week right there, unless your offense just knocks the cover off the ball, which, as we saw earlier, you did not do. And part of it might be due to the fact that Gavin Lux, Jeff O'Neill, and Seth Beer, your ultimate pickup right there last week, who, who even I was like, ah, oh, damn, I should have picked him up, have all kind of, you know, done what they're supposed to do. 260 hitters, Gav Gavin Lux not doing any anything this last week. We know the Dodgers are going to, you know, rotate in and out 45 different players each game, so he's not going to get a full nine any games, but maybe once a week. Um, but I do see you picking up the dub over Rob Manfred's fan club strictly for the fact they haven't won yet I can't pick them to win yet so Joe I'm going to you picking up a dub Joe Marshall next up we got the man known as Mr. Sprinkles going against someone who is just here he will not get fined even if he's not here but it would be a waste of 150 doll hairs so just here what a wow week too just the pitching was phenomenal sab dog like pitching the hit hitting was amazing thrills like hitting and there's a reason that you you dominated the competition last week. That was just crazy right there. Nobody bats 300, and you pulled off a 298 batting average, 288 batting average. Who does that? Who bats 300 in the majors? Like four whole players in the whole Major League Baseball are going to average a 300 average, and your whole team almost did it for one week. That's incredible. But I think a lot of that thanks needs to go to Ty France up in Seattle. Sent him a little care package for this past week. 13 for 26, batted... 500 OPS of 1300 those are video game numbers Ty and just as long as you're doing them against anybody that's not this guy we're good to go his opponent right there what a valiant comeback down 13 10, 11 to 3 at one point in time on Friday Jaycock just fought back and that's Saturday 14 for 45 day really flipped the script if I do say so myself um, something that really could have helped maybe put you in that victory position is cutting Dansby Swanson, Jaycock. He is terrible. Terrible. One of the worst shortstop in baseball right now. There's got to be somebody better out there for you to own on your team. I know you love the Braves, but I'd rather own Guillermo Heredia right now than Dansby Swanson. And if you ever want to pick up another dub, you cannot have Ian Happ be your second best offensive player in a week. He, he, he was number two for you this past week. If he's number one, be above Vladdy, just you've lost that week. Just go ahead and start looking for the next opponent. This week, though, I don't see you losing strictly because you and Sav have this kind of like sly little back and forth rivalry that a lot of people see right there. You don't hide it. It's, it's not a super hidden one, super not under the cover, but it's there. I see it, and I expect Sprinkles to be the winner of that duo. Next up, we got two matches to go. Do we go to matchup of the week or dud of the week? Because I'm feeling duddish right now. We're going to the dud of the week. And we're talking about Anthony. We're talking about D Harp. Both 0-2 this week. Anthony, first off, no offense, no pitching, no chance. Just as Vince McMahon might say, you've got no chance. Da -na -na -na. No chance to win each week. Because that's what I feel like looking at your team. I personally, you've, you've messaged, what, what the hell? What do I do? Can we redraft? Unfortunately, we can't do either of those things because numerous players would, would complain. But what I will do, I will sell you my team for $100. We will switch owners. You send me $100, I will I will give you the ownership of a team that is already pre-made for the playoffs, ready to go, just a couple fine tweaks to be world championship material. And I will take over, honestly, the worst team in the league. I will take them over and get them to playoff contention. If, if you want to buy my team for $100, you be Steve Ballmer, I'll be Donald Sterling, except a little less racist, and you can take over my team. So just think about that. D. Harb, while he's thinking about that, You've also got me pondering a question. Who the F is Tommy is T. Estrada? Is it Tommy Estrada? Taylor Estrada? Uh, uh, Tequavius Estrada? I don't know. Timon, maybe? What? Who is this person? 
I looked at your team to make this, and I saw him at second base or third base, and I did. I had no idea who he was. So if that's where we're at in this league, where we're scraping, looking for that kind of player, then I feel like as a commission, I've done my job, and I've made it where the the two players that are not in the league this year making us a 10-teamer, we're not totally missing out. We don't have the waiver wires full of just amazing players to choose from. And I also saw that Teoscar's made his yearly trip to the disabled list. That's nice. You know, he's got to get at least one or two of those out each season to take away 15 to 30 games. So he's getting it out right now. And while he's getting it out, Showtime is getting it in on the pitching mound, man. Woo, boy. You talk about a good pickup. Showtime right there because him and Edwin Diaz, the only ones getting some Ks per nine looking at that team. You got a bunch of good pitchers. Not the not the live arms that, you know, 12K per nine, 11K per nine. You're getting the, the seven to nine, which is good, but you, Showtime and Diaz are really carrying that, and they're going to carry you to a victory this week over the aforementioned um, soon-to-be 0-3, got five on it. He'll maybe swap his name for maybe Detective Sherlock Holmes this week. Maybe he'll, that'll help sleuth them out of victory. We can only hope. And now on to the matchup of the week. The only matchup, and the looking at it, potentially the last matchup of the year to favor, to go against two unbeaten teams right here. And we've got Cody against B Green. Ghostman on second versus Alpha Academy. Wow. Two teams on draft day, you're like, all right, we know Code. Former champions got some skill down the year last year and the year prior. So does has he lost a step? And then you look at B Green and you wonder, will he ever find his footing right there? Is he eating a a, a graham cracker laced HHC brownie thing, put himself into a deep coma as he's making these delicious new candies, which yours truly took some yesterday. Oh my god, I was swaying. I didn't know which way was up. It had this man messed up, so that that gives you an idea of the potency of these things that B Green's been. And Thrills are making through Atomic Labs. If you don't know about Atomic Labs, check out Atomic Labs. These videos are brought to you by Atomic Labs. So Alpha Academy, let's talk about you for a second. Easy win last week. Easy win. Didn't really have to think about anything. Didn't have to worry about spots sharding or anything like that. And part of the reason was due to your draft strategy. Just going into the draft knowing I want these players. I don't care if I have to sit and wait for four hours in between my fifth pick and my sixth pick, I will wait it out to have these players on my team. You've held true to you held true to that this year. You didn't get swayed by oh, am I going to run out of money? Is this going to happen? And it's so far two weeks in, so good. And that's part of helping you out, leading this league, being two and zero, as well as that deal you made under the, you know another side little deal. Not a lot of talk about, but Aaron Nola in exchange for Aroldis Chapman. You didn't really need closers. Aroldis is a good one. Got a good starting pitcher back. Helped out both teams. Those are the types of trades I like to see right there. And Alpha, maybe that trade's going to help you win this week. I don't know because we got to look over at Code Nob's team. Jesus, Cody. A shitload of offense from catcher to first outfielder, which got me thinking, damn. You know, the one critique I've had about this team is no outfield depth, no nothing right there. It's got diddly poo. As I'm scrolling, I'm like, oh, who else? Oh, fuck. Fernando Tatis and Ronald Acuna Jr. What do they both possess, everybody? What do they both possess? Outfield eligibility. So the team that right now I'm deeming to have one of the best offenses, if not the best offense, power, average, stolen bases, is soon to add two of the top ten offensive players in all of baseball to their team. Some things in life are just unfair. And for B Green... This week is going to be one of those unfair weeks. This will be a matchup to watch all week, folks. This will not go one way or another. We will not know until Sunday afternoon, probably about 5 o'clock, which one of these teams will be undefeated heading into week four. Right now, I'm looking at Alpha Academy being that team at 3-0 and next week. I wanted to go with Cody, but I can't go with Code Nobs fully yet with that outfield as is. But when that happens... F this team. Cody's saying F this league because he's going to be picking up major dubs. So this week I got Thrills, Joe Marshall, Mr. Sprinkles, Detective Steve, and Alpha Academy picking up the dubs. We'll check back next week. But until then, thank you for watching and have a great rest of your week, gentlemen.